also known as the island of gods that prides itself in its natural beauty. Home to mesmerizing waterfalls, religious sites, iconic rice paddies, volcanic hikes, beautiful beaches, lavish parties, a massive surf culture, and so much more. Aside from this, this has been a very popular home base for the digital nomads. If you're new to my channel, welcome and thank you for tuning in. My name is RJ. I'm a full-time content creator and traveler from Vancouver, Canada. If you're traveling to Bali or if you're considering and going, but you don't know where to start, you definitely came to the right place. This is my complete travel guide to Bali. Your passport needs to be valid for at least six months from the date of entry. A 30-day tourist visa on arrival is available at no cost. If you're looking to stay longer than that, you could extend it and look at options once you're in Bali at a local embassy or online. Before hopping on your flight to Bali, you need to have an onward ticket, though I've been to Bali three times now and I was never asked if I had an onward ticket prior to boarding. So it's really a hit or miss with this, but do have one just in case. My suggestion would be to buy a refundable ticket if you don't know when you'd like to leave Bali and once you're on the island, have your ticket refunded. Indonesian rupiah is the currency and ATMs are available everywhere. Debit and credit cards are also widely accepted. When dealing with currency, just be aware that you're going to be carrying loads of notes with you and do take extra caution when you're making a transaction as 5,000 rupiah can be mistaken for 50,000 rupiah. There are several ways to get around Bali, but the most common transportation used is a scooter. You can rent them out for a day, a month, or for as long as you please. They're inexpensive and a very convenient way to get around within the island. There are a couple of cons and you need to take extra precautions if you're going to be riding a scooter. For one, don't have your cell phone or any valuable goods on your hands when you're on a scooter as thieves who are also on the scooter are trained to grab things off your hands while moving. And you won't be able to chase them down on your scooter because their scooters are tuned up and is most likely going to be faster than yours. I know this because I've experienced it. Another con is crooked cops on the streets. I won't get into too much detail about this, but it's pretty much self-explanatory. And I've also written a blog post about this, so I'll provide the link to that post in the description box down below. In most of the major cities, Grab is available and operates the same way as Uber, an app that needs to be downloaded on your phone so you could order transportation on the go within an arm's reach. Though bicycles are not as commonly used as scooters, bicycles are still another option if you're looking to get around within the town or place. If you're traveling in a group between three to five people, you could rent a car and split the cost. Just be sure whoever's driving has their international driver's license. Let's kick it off with Seminyak, a modern city with shopping malls, fancy restaurants, and cool hangout spots by the water to catch an epic sunset. Kuta, which is just about 5 kilometers down south of Seminyak, also offers the same type of vibe. We'll continue making our way down the coast to Uluwatu. Aside from the relaxing and less populated beaches like Green Bowl Beach and Tegalwangi, as well as the popular surf spots such as Single Fin on this side of the island, Uluwatu Temple is also located here. A Balinese Hindu temple situated on a steep cliff with an amazing view of the Indian Ocean. Another temple you'd want to check out is way up north from Uluwatu. Tanalot, a popular tourist spot known for its picturesque rock formation and a great spot to catch the sunset. Let's move along the coast towards Changu. Changu is known for it being a good surf spot and just an overall good vibe. Let's take a break from the coast and head up to check out a couple of waterfalls. Now there's a lot of waterfalls in Bali, but here are my recommendations. Kampuhan Waterfall, a peaceful waterfall within walking distance from Git Git Waterfall. I actually came across this waterfall accidentally because I intended to go to Git Git, but because people built things around Git Git Waterfall that took its natural beauty away, I ended up liking Kampuhan more just because Git Git felt like an amusement park. Speaking of amusement parks, Teganugan is another waterfall that has restaurants, bars, and big speakers built around it. No joke. Tukadzipuing is a cool waterfall inside a cave. You need to come here early because it gets really, really packed. If you're lucky, the sun will hit at the right spot at the time you're there, making it a very picturesque waterfall. Other waterfalls worth mentioning are Sikumful and Nung Nung Waterfall. Let's move on over to one of my favorite spots in Bali, Ubud. Ubud is a town surrounded by a very lush landscape, Hindu temples, as well as being known as the center for traditional crafts and dance. There's a lot of things to do here, so let's kick it off with the Ubud Marketplace. 
For all you shoppers out there, this is the place to be. It's also a great spot to get your souvenirs here as there are many random things you can find here. A lot of the items do not have a price tag, so be sure that your bargaining game is on point. The Sacred Monkey Forest. A sanctuary to over 700 monkeys with 180 different types of trees. The Kampuhan Ridge Walk is a great place to take a walk and soak in the lush surroundings in the area. The trail can be very peaceful and scenic if you're lucky enough to have it all to yourself. Try to make it out here as early as possible. Ubud is also the place to do some glamping or staying at a villa with an infinity pool just because of where it's situated. It's the perfect getaway setting because of its lush surroundings. This is the most iconic paddy fields in Bali, the Tegalalang rice fields. I highly recommend waking up bright and early to get here before anyone else wakes up so that you have the place all to yourself. Walking through the paddy fields as the sun rises and witnessing this beauty is like walking into a fantasy world. As we move away from the greenery of Ubud, if this is not the most Instagram spots in Bali, while well, it's fairly high up there on the list. Pura Lampayang Temple is also known as Heaven's Gate, a temple with a beautiful backdrop of Mount Agung. You need to get here early, preferably before 9 a.m. to avoid a long queue if you're wanting to get that photo. Many photos online can be deceiving as they are shot with a reflective glass to make it seem like there's a puddle with the most perfect reflection. This is not real. Nonetheless, it is a gorgeous temple worth visiting. Another picturesque temple worth visiting is Ulundanu Temple, situated on Lake Beratan. This is an ideal spot to catch a sunrise or a sunset. If you're looking to cleanse your mind, body, and soul, take a dip in the holy spring water in Pura Tirtha Empul. Many foreigners as well as Balinese Hindus come here for a ritual purification. Mount Batur is a hike that you'll be doing early in the morning. Standing at 1,717 meters high, depending on your condition level, the hike can take up anywhere between four to five hours round trip. It's an amazing experience you cannot miss. Another amazing hike worth checking out is Mount Agung. I did this hike before it erupted in late 2017 and on my recent trip to the island, I was told that no one was permitted to hike up the volcano. Do check online for any updates about it, but if you get the chance to do it, do it. This is the highest point in Bali at 3,031 meters, a sunrise hike that is less touristy and a bit tougher than Mount Batur. Other notable things that you should add to your list is to check out Bali Swing, go surfing, and do some yoga or meditation because Bali is really known for this. I'm gonna wrap up my travel guide to Bali, but before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more travel-related content. Like this video so that the YouTube algorithm continues to show this video to people who are looking for Bali tips just like you. I'd also love to hear from you, so comment down below if you have any questions and I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.